hypermedia, nodes, links, and URLs. So hypermedia is a nonlinear medium of information which includes the use of graphics, video, and plain text to be incorporated as hyperlinks. Hypermedia is user oriented in which the users can navigate documents by clicking on those blue underlined links or other types of hypermedia such as the images or videos, okay, which will take them to desired resources or documents. The World Wide Web is a classic example of hypermedia. So hypermedia obviously needs to be arranged in a specific way for all this to work. So it's organized through methods such as nodes and links, uniform resource locators, and metadata such as HTML tags. In this video, we'll just be looking at nodes and links and the URLs, and another video will be for meta tags. So firstly is the nodes and links. Nodes are the terminals that allow the users to access a system. So it's the device you are using to get onto that actual system, whether it be on a network or your system alone. So your school laptop will be considered a node as it is used to access your school's network. The node allows you to click on other links in order to navigate the network location set up by a school, whether it be on their internal network, okay, or access obviously resources that are also available on the internet, or get into things such as the school's database through your own intranet. Okay? The link side is what's happening behind the scenes. Okay, and that's what allow the navigation to occur into these network locations. So the links contain the specific file parts to take the user from one location to another. And that's what it's attached to the specific hypermedia. URLs are example of links which are used on the internet. Often a link's file path is not visibly displayed and it's instead hidden within the metadata of an image or text, okay, which then sends you to that file location when clicked. So usually you don't see the address of where you're going. You just click on that link, which may be a specific word or a specific image. Okay, and in its metadata is that file path, that URL that takes you to that location. So then let's have a look at then what is a URL, okay, which stands for Uniform Resource Locator, which is a specific character string that constitutes a reference to a resource, whether it be stored locally on a person's system, okay, on a network or on the internet. Most web browsers will display a URL of an actual web page in the address bar at the top. So a typical URL might look like this. Okay, firstly, here is just a base website, okay, and that's for Nessa. If you're doing a HSC this year, I'm sure you're very familiar with this website. Okay, firstly is HTTP, okay, which is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is a protocol which sets the rules for transmission over the internet. So if you're accessing the internet, you've got to be using the HTT protocol to access a website. The next part of it is the World Wide Web, okay, which indicates that the source is a website, okay, and all websites start with www. Okay, then we get into the stuff that's kind of specific to the website we're looking at now. So let's take a look at this Nessa part, which is the domain name that is the specific name of the website. Okay, so it is Nessa's website and that's their name, Nessa. Okay, and all websites have different names. Okay, and you have to set them up through a domain host and purchase specific domain names to have your name in a website. Going on from there then is the top level domain or the domain extension, which indicates the type of site that this website is. Okay, so in the case of this one, it is an EDU, which indicates it is an educational website. But there's also .coms, which are commercial. We have .govs for government-based websites. And then there are other things such as .net for certain networks that are set up, .mil for military. Okay, there are many different types of extensions, which obviously outline the type of organization that this website is being hosted for. And then on the end here, we have the geographical domain, which indicates the source of a website, okay, and the country of origin, really. And in this case, with the .au, it is Australia, okay? But there are other, obviously other domain extensions as well, okay, such as .gr for Greece, uh, .vi for Vietnam, okay, many other extensions which indicate the source of where a website has come from. So this is the basic layout of a URL, but then we also can have extensions placed on the back, Okay, and these extensions are the directory parts. So this basically gets us past the home page. Okay, that www.nessa.edu.au would take to its home page. But then when we start navigating into the website, we do get the directory file path coming up after it. So I would have clicked on a sub page here called subjects, and then from subjects, I would have clicked into another sub page called IPT. So the web address reflects that. Okay, and it's addressing to a specific location within the website's subfolders, what's happening behind the scenes. Okay, because a website is stored on a server as a series of folders. Okay, and obviously the home page is where it's led to. And then once you get to the home page, it goes into its folders where there's other websites, uh, subpages, 
okay, which navigate to different areas of the actual website and accessing new web pages, okay, in a specific structure. And the web address, the URL, reflects that folder structure. And you can see that every time there's a backslash, okay, coming up after the domain extension, okay, we are going to the extensions of that actual website. So I hope this is giving you an understanding of what hypermedia is and what nodes and links are, and also a bit of an understanding of the structure of URLs and their logic and how they are arranged.